Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Lush Foliage. In today's video, we are going to be talking about another beautiful philodendron called as the philodendron Prince of Orange. Now, just like uh, the last philodendron that I spoke about, which was uh, the Florida Ghost, remember, as I said, the new leaves will start to come out uh, much lighter or variegated in color. But as and when it starts getting older, the leaves will start turning green in color. Now, the same thing goes with this plant, but over here, the plant will have orange color. That's why it's called as the Prince of Orange. The new leaf is going to be very bright in orange, and it all depends upon how much of light you give. The more light you're going to give, the more orange the leaf will come out so eventually as the new leaf starts to mature and it starts getting older it's going to turn green like this so only the new leaves will be orange in color a lot of people think that uh, because the name is philodendron prince of orange so they think that the entire plant is going to stay orange that's not true only the new leaves now you can see this is the new leaf that is coming up let me show you closer so this is the new leaf. It has just come out of its catafil and you can see it is already quite orange. And eventually once that leaf like this one is already finishing its orange color and it's now going to turn green like this. So the entire plant will not stay orange as and when the leaves start getting older, they will turn green in color. But it's an extremely easy low maintenance plant. If you are a beginner, you're looking for a plant that does not require a lot of maintenance, then this is one of the plant. But you have to remember the basic things, the basic care has to be given, which we are going to be talking in this video. Let's start off with light because that's the most important thing. If you want the new leaf to be bright orange in color, you have to offer a good amount of indirect but bright light. You can offer filtered light, you can offer dappled sunlight as well. Early morning before 9 a.m. if you tend to get that mild sunlight you can offer that but do not keep it in a prolonged direct sunlight or afternoon direct sunlight it will get burnt it will damage the leaves so you have to be extremely careful. The best thing what you can do is give it a good amount of indirect but bright light. You can grow it indoor, you can grow it outdoor. If you're growing it indoor, ensure you're keeping it near a windowsill wherein it gets a good amount of indirect bright light but the direct sunlight or the direct rays of the sun does not fall onto the leaves otherwise that will damage the foliage. Now talking about the soil mix, I tend to use the same soil mix which is a mix of coco peat, garden soil, sand and perlite because philodendrons prefer a well draining loose porous soil mix. They prefer a slight amount of moisture in the soil but not soggy wet soil. So ensure the container, the pot that you're using should have a drain hole so that the excess water can drain out. A prolonged soggy soil will lead to root rot so you have to be extremely careful. Now talking about watering, during summers you'll have to increase the frequency of watering, during winters you'll have to reduce the frequency of watering. Again this depends upon your environment and climate and the type of soil mix that you have. Some people might have a soil mix that tends to take a little bit longer to dry so you have to check it individually and then go ahead and water. Just because I'm saying that uh, during summers you have to increase the frequency of watering doesn't mean that you have to do the same thing. You have to check that the upper layer of around one to two inches of the soil is dry and then go ahead and do a complete watering. Because a lot of these things are or I would say watering completely depends upon your environment and climate. Some people have a very dry environment, some people have a very humid environment. So your watering tends to change according to that. Now talking about fertilizers, it is a philodendron, it's in its growing period during the summer so you can go with any liquid based fertilizer during the summers probably once a month and during winters please do not add any fertilizers. Now talking about propagation, it's pretty simple, you will find nodes on this, whenever you see nodes you can go ahead and cut it a couple of centimeters beneath the node or if you tend to get some offsets, you can separate the offsets by root division. Uh, I will put the link of the uh, stem propagation in the description below. You can check it out because it's the same process. If you tend to see a nod with roots, just a couple of centimeters beneath that, you can do a cutting and then you can either put it into the soil or you can do water propagation with the help of lecker. Now talking about temperature and humidity, philodendrons belong to the tropical environment. They prefer a slight amount of moisture. They prefer a warm environment and they prefer a humidity of around 50 to 60 percent. 
Now, this is a plant that can do well in average humidity. So, uh, usually the average humidity is around 50% indoor or outdoor. You can easily grow this plant. But if you are from a very, very dry environment and if you're growing it indoor and the indoor environment is dry, you can use a humidifier, you can use the pebble tray method or you can club other plants together and that will give a good amount of humidity. Now, talking about is this plant toxic? Yes, all the philodendrons are toxic. So, ensure you're keeping this plant away from the reach of small children and pets because if the leaves are ingested it can lead to trouble so always ensure that you're keeping this plant away from the reach of small children and pets apart from that when you're doing a propagation of philodendron when you're doing a stem cutting ensure you're using gloves especially if you have sensitive skin because the sap or the plant milk can be irritating to the skin can be allergic to some people who have sensitive skin so be very careful apart from that it's a very very easy to grow plant fuss free less demanding plant so if you are a beginner if you are looking out for a plant that is not a very high maintenance plant then this is one of the plant you can add it in your collection it can be easily found online it can be easily found in your local nursery so you do check talking about pest issues yes this plant might get affected with spider mites or mealybugs so always do a routine check turn the leaves and check if do you see any kind of white flies if you tend to see any white flies or on the stem if you tend to see any mealybugs you can go with any organic solution that you have been using all this while so guys that's all about it i hope that this video was helpful to you if it was please hit the like button and if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing to it until then take care stay safe and keep propagating